What's the word, y'all? The Monday episode is always a bit weird, man. We got three days worth of basketball and three days worth of basketball storylines to get to. So leave a like. Let's jump into it. And I say three days worth of basketball, but we're starting today's episode talking about a dude that ain't even suited up this year. Because the Ben Simmons Chronicles continue. And yes, I did that alliteration on purpose. I used to write poetry when I was a kid, believe it or not. I won some awards. Um, the 76ers find Ben Simmons his $360,000 game salary for missing Thursday's game and plan on resuming finding him until he cooperates with team physicians and and his mental health issues and fulfill other basketball related obligations. Boom, that was Wolves from a few days ago. Now, the last time we talked about Ben Simmons, um, he came into camp and he was like, I'm not mentally ready to play basketball. The 76ers said, you know what, Ben? We can, we completely understand. We're going to allow you to take some time to yourself, but when we give you a call, you better pick up because we got team doctors, we got team psychologists, and we can help you get your mental health in the right spot for you to play basketball again. So I guess they gave that man a call and he did not answer. And they said, hey, that $360,000 for one game, per game? I know we see players sign contracts all the time for $150 million, but to see it in that type of perspective, you know, you do know how much money that is. You're all working adults, I would assume. That's a lot of money. And you know what talks? That does. Yeah, I would assume that he is going to um, participate and show up very, very soon. Because that was on Thursday. He missed another game against the Bulls on Saturday. So 360 plus 360 is $720,000 has gone down the train because he hasn't reported to set. And I would assume he's going to report relatively soon. Right now, Ben Simmons got to be fuming because his entire plan to get out of Philly ain't worked at all. Shout out to the 76ers for calling this bluff and 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 just just sitting on the Ben Simmons thing because they could have traded my boy away from for, for Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley and be like, okay, at least we got something. No. And another reason why he is losing is because the 76ers are winning. Look at the conference in Eastern, Eastern Conference standings. At the top, it ain't um, uh, Milwaukee, Miami, um, uh, Brooklyn, the Chicago. No. At the top of the Eastern Conference right now, are the 76ers. And that is why. Now, I know that they finished first seed last year, but you know what I mean. This team is missing Ben Simmons. They're all NBA player, the defensive player of the year candidate. They're also missing Tobias Harris, health and safety protocol. They're missing um, um, Danny Green, health and safety protocol. Matisse Steibel, health and safety protocol. And they have only lost two games in a year. Hey, listen, I got to see them boys up close and personal because they just beat my Bulls back to back, right? So I am trying to figure out, are the 76ers just really that nice or are the Bulls frauds? And the real answer is probably a little bit of both, honestly. It's so insane what Joel Embiid can do with a bunch of shooters. Now, we talked about this a couple days ago, so I don't want to wrap on this too long. But the team offense is the best in the league at this moment. They have the best offense in the league. And let me let me remind you who they started the other night. I have to even go look it up because I don't even remember who was starting that game, bro. The Bulls should be ashamed of themselves losing this one. Or should they? Should they be ashamed or the 76ers that nice? I don't really know. The Bulls, they do need to be better, though. So they started Tyrese Maxey, Seth Curry, Shake Melton, B-Ball Paul, and, and, and Joel Embiid. They had eight healthy players on the whole team. And they won, they won a game. And Joel Embiid hasn't even been amazing. Now, the last game, he was really, really good. He put up an MVP performance. He was waving to the crowd of Chicago. I can't even be mad at him. You know what I'm saying? If you dominate and you deserve, like when Trey Young did the shit to Madison Square Garden, he deserved to do that because he was dominating. Now, when Joel Embiid waved to my home crowd, I could be, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a little bit hurt about it, but I can't say otherwise because he bodied us. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the team has been amazing. There's a lot of fluidity to it. George Niang, again, one of the better pickups of this offseason, four cock Korkmaz came into the game and did not miss. It felt like he didn't miss. And this is, this is another thing. The defense is, is 12th in the league right now. And that was one of the major questions, right? Without their point of attack man, which was Ben Simmons for the last couple of years, he's a defensive player to your candidate. How will, will things look? How will things look defensively? It's good enough to, to, to be better, the better half of the league. And when you got the number one offense, that is a good combination. Now, how much of this do you believe is up to you, right? Seth Curry shooting 51% from three. And though he is the, the most efficient three-point shooter of all time, I don't know if he's keeping that up. Um, uh, George Niang is shooting 41%, Forkai Korkmaz 43%, Danny Green 44%. So these are players that we know to be good shooters, but majority of role players have hot streaks. They cool down and get back to where they should be. And maybe this is just a collective hot streak. I don't know, but the offense looks way more fluid. And Joel Embiid has been throwing shots low key. The chemistry that we have is really different from previous years. 
we are complete and we're on the same page. He also said something in that post-game interview after dominating my Bulls, saying something like, it's good to have a player on our team that when you draw a player for him to shoot the ball, he's going to shoot the ball. He was talking about um, Forkan Korkmaz, and obviously, bang, 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 shots fired. And then he even shot, <laughs> he shot uh, shots at his own teammate, George Nian. He said, yeah, I thought George, George sucked, and obviously he don't. So um, it's a cool story. And now I got people arguing on Twitter what the 76ers should do. Hey, we're a good team right now. Now let's go get some more depth. We were thinking about getting a star player and picks for Ben Simmons. Now we can settle because we know that the, the team that we have now is good. I don't like that at all. Because when we talk about the playoffs, to win a championship, which is the ultimate goal for Philly fans and everybody across the league, you need two stars. You're just going to need two all-star caliber players. And right now you got one, and that is Joel. You got a great amount of good role players. But when the playoff series comes around and you're going against Brooklyn or you're going against Milwaukee, I don't know how much I trust all of the great shooters to continue to shoot great. We haven't seen a ton of Tobias because, you know, health to save the protocol and stuff. So maybe he is that second guy. Maybe he's not. But I wouldn't be like, hey, since we're so good right now, we'll settle for Buddy Hield. I'm good. <laughs> Let's just continue to call the bluff on Ben Simmons and just, just wait. But then again, it's going to hurt Ben Simmons' overall trade value because now the, the Portland Trailblazers see like, man, we thought this man, you know, gave the 76ers a lot and they better without him right now. So should we give them what we, what they need? I don't know. That's enough time talking about 76ers. Shout out to them though. And let's talk about the NBA Finals from a few days ago. At least that's what Twitter was calling it. Um, The Utah Jazz versus the Miami Heat. But when I'm watching this game, I cannot help to see the crazy amount of similarities in the personnel between the teams. Hear me out. We got a ball handling bucket getter that is the Donovan Mitchell slash Jimmy Butler. We got an aging point guard that box score might not say it, but this man is super impactful on the court. That is Mike Conley and Kyle Lowry. We have a defensive player of the year candidate that is Rudy Gobert, Bam Adebayo. We got a hard-nosed defensive player. Everybody knows him for his defense. That is P.J. Tucker and Royce O'Neal. Off the bench, we got a shot chucker dude that can immediately catch fire. That is Tyler Hero, Jordan Clarkson. That was the only thing I can think about while watching this game. Obviously, offensive schemes, defensive schemes are, are different and everything. But personnel-wise, personnel-wise, it's kind of crazy how, how similar these two teams are. Like, look at this. Utah, second-best offense in the league. Miami, fourth best offense in the league. Defensively speaking, Utah, eighth best defense. Miami, fourth best defense. Point differential, we got fourth best for the Utah Jazz, second best for the Miami Heat. These are the two same, they're the same teams, bro. They're the exact same teams. Who do you trust more? Who do I trust more? But like I said, scheme's really, really different because the Utah Jazz only shoot threes and the Miami Heat only shoot threes if your name is Duncan. <laughs> That's how they're different. That's how they differ. Okay, let's talk about the Orlando Magic. I was gonna make a video, and maybe I still will do this, ranking my favorite league pass teams. And to, to be qualified to be one of my favorite league pass teams, you just have to be fun. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be any anything other than fun. And the Orlando Magic cla uh, classified. They are now three and eight with a win over the Utah Jazz. A big win for them. Again, Utah Jazz just had a dog fight against Miami and got a flight to, to Orlando for this. So a back-to-back -back loss, a scheduled loss, if you will, for the Utah Jazz. But that's not taking anything away from the Orlando Magic because what they got building over there is, is immaculate. I feel like I will talk about them quite a bit for a team that is three and eight. But let me let me talk my trash about Cole, uh, Cole Anthony, who in this game, what did he ended up with? He ended up with 33 points, three steals, three rebounds, two assists. He had been a dude that been killing the rebound number today was not that day five threes made great great performance um but i want to shine a light on the other dude that had an amazing performance because i still got nothing but love for wendell carter 22 points 15 rebounds six assists against rudy gobert that's amazing bro and and when the, he has a performance like this or when franz wagner has a really good performance i get a lot of tweets from magic fans how's a vucevic trade now kenny and y'all be acting like I was the one to pull the trigger on the Vucevic trade. Or or that I was the one saying that we got that y'all got finessed. When in reality, I, rem I will remind you to go watch that video again. I was saying like that's a win-win for both teams. 
Um, because I still think that Wendell Carter had a lot in the tank. He was like 22 years old. And it's, the overall pick ended up being eighth. And boom, you got Franz Wagner. The Bulls got a player that they needed in the moment with Vucevic. It's just unfortunate that Zach Levine got the virus right before we was about to go on a run. And yeah, Vucevic has been doodle cakes uh, this season. But legit, DeMar DeRozan said that one of the reasons he signed is because he wanted to play with Vooch again. So maybe if we don't do the trade, then we don't get Vooch, we don't get DeMar DeRozan, who's the best player on the team in this exact moment. Two, two things can be, two people can win win something. And we both winning right now. You winning your development and we winning standings currently. Who knows how that, how long that's going to last? Because I think we got, I think we got Brooklyn coming up. And Brooklyn is, is getting things back together. In the business, we call that a segue because there is a five game win streak with the Brooklyn Nets at the moment. And slowly, I mean, like re really, really slowly, James Harden is starting to come back to, okay, he may not ever get back to the James Harden we know because 50% of that man's points was coming from the free throw line. But he's slowly getting back to like, oh, he's, he's an all-star again. Even though a lot of people are focusing on just, what was it, two plays for him? Where the first one was against the, um, both of them were against the Detroit Pistons. He tried to draw a foul on Josh Jackson, hook his arm, and boom, offensive foul. And then the second one was um, Sadiq Bey clamped this man up and he gave up on a play. Some people saying that he didn't know Sadiq was behind him, yada, yada, yada. Those are the two things that people are focusing on. But James Harden is slowly getting better and better every single game, which is a good sign for them. Um, Kyrie might be able to, to come hoop again soon, which is better for them. Another winner of the weekend, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Another team that will be on my favorite teams to watch in the NBA League Pass teams. Um, we were talking about at the beginning of the season how I had an all-star ballot and the only thing on it was Ricky Rubio. And then immediately after I sent him, uh, hit send on that tweet, he started to shoot terribly. Where tonight, tonight, he turned to Steph Curry in the garden and they won a game where they were missing um, Isaac Carbro, Kevin Love, Collis Sexton banged knees, so we don't know what's going on with him and his knee situation. They were missing some very quality players in their rotation, and they went into the garden and won. A lot of that is Ricky Rubio, but the player I want to show shed my um, my magnifying glass on is, of course, Evan Mobley. Um, um, I've been watching Evan Mobley very, very intensively throughout his, his rookie campaign so far. I'm still trying to figure out which one of the rookie between him and Scotty Barnes are my favorite um, to watch because I'm still watching a bunch of Raptors games, too. But what I am seeing from, from Evan Mobley on the IQ part, on the offense and the defensive side of the ball is crazy. When it comes to bigs in the NBA, we've had this conversation before, it takes a while for a big to get adjusted to the NBA game, whether offensively or defensively. You know, Evan Mobley immediately came in and is a very good defensive player. He can switch onto guards and hold his own. But the thing that I noticed more than anything today is his vision, his court vision on the roll. One of the closing plays of this game, it was a pick and roll between him and Ricky Rubio, right? Um, and first of all, he is super blessed to have Darius Garland and Ricky Rubio as his two guards because both players are above average slash really good passers. And a lot of bigs don't come into the league with that. If you're going to be a high value pick in the draft as a big, more than likely your starting point guard is trash. So the fact that he's got some good passers on his team really helps him. But anyway, a pick and roll with him and, and Ricky Rubio... Ricky Rubio hits him. He is maybe just a little bit below the free throw line. It's a, like two or three feet of space. He could float it up, but instead he dished it off to Jared Allen. Jared Allen dunked it, and that was like the icing on the cake. There were like three or four plays like that this game. Not all of them led to assists, but moments where he could have got tunnel vision on the pick and roll and said, oh, I got the ball. I need to go score. But instead he looked, surveyed his options, and he made the right basketball play. Oh, my God. The ceiling on this man is, is ridiculous. I did not expect this draft class to be this good this early. KD has already talked about Scotty Barnes. He said, what, are you 18, 19, 20? Wow, he's going to get a lot better. I, it's hard to, it's rare to see somebody play with that much love of the game this early on. These dudes is crazy. I wish I had the fourth overall pick this year instead of last year. No disrespect to my boy P-Will. We love you, bro. But like, if we weigh in our options, Patrick, Scotty, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it sucks that Patrick is injured, though. 26, 5 assists, 9 rebounds. That's against the Knicks in Madison Square Garden, y'all. His other really big game came against the Lakers where he was guarding LeBron and stuff. He likes big sceneries, big competition. And they are on a four-game win streak, ladies and gentlemen. The Cavs are here. And that's with them dealing with injuries and health and safety protocol and things. 
Um, I just there are a few teams out there, and I, this is gonna be the last thing I say before we end today's episode. I'm gonna give you a name of a bunch of teams that are playing decent slash solid, and y'all tell me if y'all believe them to be actual playoff teams, okay? Um, because right now the Washington Wizards are on a two-game streak. They are seven and three. They beat the Bucks today. The Cleveland Cavaliers on a four-game streak, seven and four. Both of them right now are in the playoffs. The Raptors are six and five, two game skid right now, but they just came off a five game win streak. They are at the eighth seed at the moment. Do you believe in those three teams, one or two or three of those three teams, when we're done with the 80 plus games, to be in the playoffs? Not play in, but like in the top eight. Because it's interesting, man, because yeah, it's still small sample size, but we're like 10 games to the season, which is like a little less than the eighth of the way through the, through the year. At what point does it stop being small sample size and be like, oh, okay, we believe in this? I don't know. You let me know in the comment section. I appreciate all of y'all, uh, and I, hopefully I'll see y'all tomorrow. Hopefully we get a good, a good amount of basketball tonight.